What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video is what happened immediately after 9-11. Obviously we've done a few 9-11 videos in the past. We were, what, we were two? Yes. It would have been two when this actually happened. So obviously we weren't, we don't remember it actually happening. We never saw it actually happening, but we've done so many videos learning about mm -hmm. it. We've seen stuff in our own and obviously a tragic, tragic event. And our hearts go out to everyone infected, which I'm pretty, pretty sure is pretty much everyone watching because yeah. it was such a magnitude um Event, it's very, yeah, event, well, I, I, right, yeah, yeah. Uh, accident, um, event, what, I don't know what to actually call it, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, but this is going to be what happened, Infographics, always a good channel, 26 minutes long, so we're going to get a proper breakdown, it seems like. Yeah. So if you enjoy this content, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, would appreciate it. But it's going to be interesting to see what immediately happened. I know, I, I don't know what route this is going to go down. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's going to go down going into the war after it, I don't know. But I'm guessing maybe, like, airport security, suddenly what it is today you know what i mean yeah i'm thinking either that or i'm thinking like as in the rebuild maybe the rebuild yeah or the cleanup or the search for people or yeah. immediately after i don't know if that means literally as soon as the plane struck or if that means the days and weeks that came after the, yeah i don't know but i guess we're about to find we're out we're gonna find out um like i say it's, it's one of them we understand if you don't want to watch it because it can bring back so we do have other videos um or you can just enjoy life long be happy be positive but i think stuff like this is important to learn as well isn't it Definitely. um so you ready to get into it I am. let's get into what happened immediately after 9 11 what we got on september 11th 2001 terrorists struck the united states and launched the world into a new era the global war on terror. After decades of Cold War preparations, the US and its allies found themselves unprepared for this new asymmetric war, but they were very quick learners. First though, the US had to deal with the literal wreckage from the attack. Yeah, Both the Pentagon and the World Trade Center had suffered catastrophic damage, but the Pentagon was only partially destroyed. The World Trade Center would be a near total loss. Immediately upon realizing the homeland was under attack, the United States took the unprecedented steps of ordering all civilian aircraft in U.S. Oh, yeah, airspace to land down. at yeah. the nearest available airport. Hundreds of aircraft from various nations were all forced to land or face the wrath of the U.S. Air Force, that must have been which was a not in the mood night. for discussion yeah. that day. Tens of thousands of travelers had their travel plans hopelessly disrupted as aircraft landed on the nearest available I guess airfield as well, they didn't all across know. the U.S. They potentially French tourists wouldn't have known why. Yeah, they probably wouldn't have known why, but this is a perfect example of... Why you should never be annoyed if your plane's delayed. Sometimes things are bigger, and uh, mm. and yeah, someone someone may be late to your plane, it delays it or something like that, but you have zero clue what's actually going well, actually, on. Actually, do you know, we had, there was an example when we were coming back from London from seeing your sister, we are about 40 minutes delayed because someone who's who had checked in, bag was on the plane, they had to take they it off. The family emergency and had to go. They couldn't, we don't, we don't know. She, they could have had a heart attack in the airport. Yeah, you never know. Fly. Um, but obviously, this is bigger and it makes sense. I understand why people might have been annoyed at the time if you don't know, but as soon as you know, like, okay, yeah. yeah. Bigger things in life, we don't get to go on a holiday for a couple of days. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's not the end of the world. People have lost their lives. It's no comparison. Exactly. On their way to Hawaii, we're suddenly stuck in Montana and the shutdown of air traffic affected incoming aircraft as well. U.S. Air it's Force F-15s well. and F-16s loaded for air-to-air -air combat immediately took up air defense patrols over the American West and East Coast, as well as the airspace west of Alaska and north of North America. The United States implemented DEFCON 3, or Defense Condition 3, across oh, wow. all its military facilities around wow. the world. This meant that U.S. forces, especially the Air Force, had to be ready to mobilize at a moment's notice with all the Air Force combat planes ready to take off to the skies within 15 minutes of alert. Wow. The US wasn't just worried about all further terrorist attacks crazy. using civilian airliners. It was sending a clear and strong signal to any would-be adversary that while the US had just taken a nasty sucker punch to the face, it was still on its feet and ready to fight. Any attempts to capitalize on US confusion and weakness and the immediate aftermath of the attacks would be met with immediate and overwhelming force, including nuclear if need be. Civilian Which, aircraft never coming got to, to the stage. United States were immediately ordered to divert and barred from entering American airspace. Anyone wishing to complain could take it up with the Air Force F-15s. Yeah. Mm. Nobody did. Planes were diverted to Canada and Mexico, causing a global aviation logjam and chaos that would last for days. The first priority were search and rescue efforts at both the Pentagon and the World Trade Center. The Pentagon had been a priority target though each hijacker had been instructed that if they couldn't reach their intended targets, they had the freedom to use their own initiative and choose secondary targets. Anyone who couldn't do either or experienced any difficulties was to immediately crash their planes. Also, the very it's visual mad, symbol it? of American global power, the Pentagon, 
had been high on the list of targets, but the attack did only relatively minor damage to the huge structure. 125 Pentagon workers were killed in the attack, 70 civilians and 55 way military too many. personnel, way too mostly many. U.S. Army or U.S. Navy employees. The highest ranking casualty was Lieutenant General Timothy Maud, an Army Deputy Chief of Staff. Thanks to reinforced construction techniques, though, the Pentagon was a particularly tough target to take on, and the damage was limited considering the incredible amount of energy released upon impact. Yeah, At the World imagine. Trade Center site, though, things were far more grim. Firefighters from the New York City Fire Department rushed to the scene of the attack and braved the smoke, so dust, brave. and raging firestorm mm -hmm. above their heads. Falling debris made the task even more difficult after the towers collapsed in on themselves. Engine 10 and Ladder 10 were the first to arrive on scene since their firehouse was directly across the street. And at 8.50 a.m., an incident command post was established in the lobby of the North Tower. However, due to safety concerns, the command post was moved across West Street. This would end up saving the lives of many senior officials, though many more died as the North Tower lobby was still being used to coordinate rescue operations when the tower collapsed. Tragically, a repeater system meant to help with radio communications during an emergency had failed due to the attack, and the fire chiefs were unable to contact many of their men when the order to evacuate had been given. As a result, many firefighters and first responders, some who had no radios and had simply shown up in their off-duty hours to assist, were lost in the collapse. Ooh, 343 yeah, firefighters would die from us. both tower collapses. The command Surgeon post on West Street was taken out by falling debris, which also killed New York Fire Department Chief Peter Ganchi. A new command post was set up in a firehouse in Greenwich Village, from where a response from half of all New York Fire Department units as well as volunteers from Nassau, Suffolk, Westchester County, and others could be managed. Other volunteers who did not make it to the site instead went to firehouses now short on personnel in order to cover their duties for the duration of the search and rescue They're just as important. Wow. Just hours wow. after the collapse, though, firefighters erected a flag taken from a nearby yacht on the scene of the attack, evocative of the famous Iwo Jima wow. flag-raising photograph. The medical response began immediately after the first impact, with the casualty staging area moved to the corner of Vesey and West Streets. Five triage areas would be set up around the entire site, as volunteers flooded in to assist with the massive number of casualties being brought off the site. Triage centers would be moved to Chelsea Piers and Staten Island Ferry Terminal in the wake of the collapse, while neighboring hospitals sped the flow of critical supplies. Sadly, emergency medical services would end up treating very few individuals, mostly smoke inhalation patients. Truth is, very few people would end up surviving the collapse of the towers. Both medical triage areas were shut down the next day. On the water, the U.S. Coast Guard mobilized as many assets as it could to aid in evacuating people stranded on Manhattan Island. Counterterrorism patrols by watercraft were also conducted in an okay. attempt to thwart any possible follow-up attacks on either civilians or the emergency responders themselves. Yes, yeah, I suppose, resources I suppose at that point, you, obviously we know now, but we're not yeah. know more, but you have no clue, do you? No. Um, we did um, boat lift him. We, we, we did a reaction to boat lift him. That was amazing to respond. Just regular fishing people out there like yeah. nah. We got hope. It's kind of restores faith in humanity, yeah, it does. isn't it? And it, it, it's one of them old sayings, isn't it? Like, I mean, everyone says America's so divided now with politics and stuff like that, which we don't get involved in. But the fact that when something like this happens, it's a shame mm -hmm. it takes something like this, this to happen. happen. But when it does, everyone, everyone just unites together. and it's yeah. like, and it bonds everyone together, Definitely. and everyone just helps everyone when they can. And there's no arguing. It's like, right, we we've, we've got something to do as a country. Yeah. We do it, and I absolutely love that side of it. You yeah, know? definitely. Coast Guard sent out a call for ships to assist with the evacuation of Manhattan Island, while other ships, such as John J. Harvey, were critical in firefighting efforts. With many water mains severed by the collapse, the John J. Harvey, a fireboat that had operated since 1930, would speed to the proximity of the site. Alongside two other FDNY fireboats, she pumped water to the site so that firefighters oh, wow. could fight the blaze amongst wow. the wreckage for 80 hours until the water mains were repaired. In eight hours following eight the attack, anywhere from half a million to a million people were evacuated from Manhattan. In effect, America's own Dunkirk and considered to be the largest maritime evacuation in history. To assist with communications, amateur radio operators set up emergency networks or joined the hundreds of volunteers forming bucket brigades. Wow. With official emergency networks completely overwhelmed, their work was invaluable to New York authorities. And on December 12, 2002, the New Jersey legislature honored their work. Rescue efforts at the site, however, were not progressing well. Few had survived so the collapse hard. of the towers, mm -hmm. and to get to them, the workers first had to dig through two feet of ash and soot. The heavy equipment had to be used to lift up massive blocks of concrete and random wreckage. Incredibly, the day after the attack, though, 
11 people would be rescued, including six firefighters and three police officers. Wow. Two police officers had survived for a full 24 hours, buried in 30 feet of rubble. But the discovery of survivors would not last long. Only 20 people would be pulled alive from the wreckage, with the last survivor being rescued 27 hours after the collapse of the North Tower. Some of the trapped were able to make cell calls to those above, but debris made it impossible to get to all of them in time. Hundreds of volunteers and officials poured over the scene with approximately 400 rescue dogs, the largest deployment of dogs in U.S. history, oh, but pretty soon dude, only cadavers crazy. were being recovered. With the psychological impact of the rescue dogs so severe that rescue workers had to bury themselves and pretend to be rescued just to lift the animals' flagging spirits. Wow. Around New York City, thousands of volunteers began to show up over the next few days to assist in whatever capacity they could. Fair the city would register Definitely. these individuals and shuttle them into Lower Manhattan, which had been closed off to everyone but rescue and recovery workers. All over New York, construction projects came to a dead stop as workers walked off the job and headed to the site of the attack. By the end of week one, over a thousand iron workers alone arrived at the site, wow. with thousands of other specialists from the US, Canada, Mexico, and other nations. Days after the attack, the focus was on investigation and clearing debris. Bucket brigades were organized from thousands of volunteers, with each person passing along a five-gallon bucket full of debris. At the end of each line, investigators sifted through the debris for evidence and human remains, with the rest being, being deposited into a site known as the pile. You know what as you're workers going wanted into, to avoid dude. using Nothing the term now. ground zero, due to connotations of a nuclear attack. By September 24th, 100,000 tons of 1.8 million tons had been removed from the site. Search for clues or remains and days. sent to the Fresh Kills landfill on Staten Island. Much of the steel would end up being recycled for use in other construction projects. 24 tons of steel would be used in constructing the USS New York, an amphibious transport dock ship meant to assist in amphibious assaults. Incredibly, through the recovery efforts, someone had attempted to conduct what would have been the heist of the decade. Just days after the collapse, rescue workers discovered scorch marks on a basement doorway underneath 4WTC. Upon exploring the building's basement, a vault containing large amounts of gold and silver coin and bars was discovered, all stored by the Bank of Nova Scotia. The would-be thieves were never discovered, their attempt at a heist likely foiled by the hundreds of rescue workers on the site and the thousands of volunteers just passed it. The U.S. military Wait, also so, mounted a meeting. I mean, was this? I mean, there's no more. I've never heard about no, that. Before, heard first, about. first time I ever heard about it. I mean, was this something which I don't? Know, again, they didn't find us. I, I don't know if we know anything about it. Was this something which I think they planned for days and day, like months and months? It just happened. It was and that time. It happened to be that time, and they went for it anyway. Or did they or do it knowing? Were they trying to take advantage? Which is awful. Trying to take advantage of 9/11. Everyone been out to their banks. No one potentially noticing all this money's gone mm. missing. Let's get in. Because again. I mean, you have to be an, an awful person to do it anyway. But to That's take even advantage, worse. yeah, it's even, kind of even worse. Like what we're just saying, everyone united together, and there's a few individuals just trying to take advantage. Mm -hmm. Let us know in the comments if, I mean, let's say, they were never caught, no one knew. But let us know what you yeah, think, was it? Yeah, if there's any more information. Because 9-11 they went for it, or had they planned it and it just happened to work out? Don't be wrong, they're both bad. But I think that happened to work out isn't as bad, if that makes sense, because they haven't tried to take advantage. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I get you. But still, you mean. it's bad, in it? That's bad. In efforts to assist civilian personnel on the ground, the Civil Air Patrol was one of the few institutions allowed to launch aircraft, and it used the opportunity to conduct an aerial reconnaissance mission over Ground Zero in order to provide analysis of the wreckage. Okay. CAP aircraft also assisted in airlifting personnel and medical equipment and supplies. The first military personnel at Ground Zero, however, were elements of the New York Army National Guard's 1 101st Cavalry 258th Field Artillery, 442nd Military Police Company, and 69th Infantry Regiment. National Guard troops supplemented NYPD and FDNY with 2,250 National Guardsmen, assisting rescue efforts by the next morning. The armory of the 69th Infantry would become a family information center to assist family members of victims in locating their loved ones or oh, recovering wow. their remains. Almost National Guardsmen yeah. also provided security to other possible target locations across New York, as well as assisted in traffic control. Soon after, the New Jersey National Guard sent its own personnel to assist. The U.S. Navy redirected its hospital ship, USNS Comfort, to Pier 92 in Manhattan. From there, crew members helped feed and house 10,000 relief workers. 
Its galley provided 30,000 meals while its medical facilities assisted injured rescue workers immediately after the attack and during the recovery process. Wow. With Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda claiming responsibility for the attacks, President Bush immediately declared a war on terrorism with the goal of destroying and dismantling global terror networks. Al-Qaeda would be enemy number one, however. A NATO committee agreed that the attack on the U.S. constituted an Article 5 response, and overnight Osama bin Laden had brought down the heat of the entire NATO alliance on his head. Across the nation, federal law enforcement and intelligence agencies coordinated to arrest 762 suspects with known or suspected ties to terror networks. However, none of those detained would be charged with terrorism, and the response is largely seen as a knee-jerk response to the September 11th attacks. To head off growing Islamophobia by parts of the U.S. population, President Bush visited the Islamic Center of Washington and reminded the nation that Arabs and Muslims living in the U.S. were still patriots. Sadly, a 1,600% surge in hate crimes or harassment of Muslims, <laughs> Arabs, so Middle Easterners, and South Asians would occur in the days immediately following the attacks. I, I, get, I get the anger, I get the upset, but at the end but of the day... It's not their fault, they yeah, didn't do it. Nothing to do with it. Um, on there, I, I don't know if it soon came out about them that they were posting on Facebook that they were so for it. So that, that makes sense, but, but it's just they're just people. They're just people living their life and seeing tragedy. They probably are affected by it as well, mentally as well. Yeah, that's not on, is it? Mm. After the attacks, President Bush took legislative action to shut down the financial assets of known terrorists and their financial networks. This froze billions of dollars of assets and would be the first shot of the global war on terror. On September 18th, a joint resolution from Congress gives President Bush the authority to use all necessary and appropriate force against the planners and instigators of the September 11th attacks. Okay. Two days later, the President announces the start of the global war on terror. Osama bin Laden has horrendously misjudged America's response to the September 11th attacks. He believed that the U.S. would respond in one of two ways, a general pullout of the Middle East or a round of cruise missile strikes against training facilities. Having weathered a storm of missiles before that did little to nothing, bin Laden believed al-Qaeda had won the day. Immediately after the 9-11 attacks, President George Bush signs into law a joint resolution by the American Congress, authorizing the president to use all reasonable force required to bring to justice or eliminate the individuals responsible yeah, for carrying really out the September 11th attacks. Uh, Laden, this makes it? Osama bin Laden public enemy number one, not just by the U.S., but by America's vast network of global allies. Al-Qaeda itself world. is targeted for destruction, and the Afghanistan Taliban regime sheltering Al-Qaeda is given an ultimatum, hand over AQ operatives or else. Meanwhile, American intelligence operatives are infiltrating northern Afghanistan, with security provided by American special forces. In a series of clandestine meetings, the U.S. develops a plan to work together with the anti-Taliban, so-called Northern Alliance. This alliance is a coalition of anti-Taliban opposition, mostly made up of Tajik factions, as well as Uzbek, Hazara Shiite, and some Pashtun Islamist factions. Before the September 11th attacks, the U.S. policy was to pressure the Taliban with sanctions and political action. But America had so far refrained from providing direct military assistance to the Northern Alliance. Okay. However, leading up to the 9-11 attacks, internal pressure within the White House is already shifting and edging the president closer toward providing weapons to the alliance. Okay. Just two days so we'll before the terror anyway. attacks in the U.S., the Taliban had assassinated Ahmad Shah Massoud, the leader of the alliance, with the aid of al-Qaeda operatives posing as journalists. Wounded in the suicide bombing, Massoud would die on his way to the hospital. Wow. The attack would later be seen as an indication that the Taliban feared the U.S. would strike back by directly financing the alliance, and thus sought to fracture it and throw it into chaos just two days before the 9-11 attacks. However, Mohammed Fahim, Massoud's lieutenant, quickly consolidated power and ensured the alliance remained intact. Okay. Shortly after the terror attacks against the U.S., President Bush issued his ultimatum and when refused, initiated a plan to militarily overthrow the Taliban, equating oh, wow. those who harbor terror. So, I mean, it was kind of tense into it. I mean, I didn't really know, again, we were two at the time, weren't we? We yeah. were talking about two days before I didn't really know the tensions. It was tense in the Middle East anyway. Yeah. And then it's like closer weapons. So it kind of 9-11 like is that final push. Like, mm -hmm. like, that's it. Do you know what I mean? That's it. So I think yeah. Bin Laden definitely did mess up there. Did, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. He did. I think he did. Two terrorists themselves. President Bush made the decision that neither the Taliban nor al-Qaeda saw coming. U.S. troops would lead the war against the Taliban themselves. The Bush administration sought U.N. approval of military action, resulting in U.N. Security Council Resolution 1368. However, while widely interpreted as an authorization for military action, it technically did not authorize America's invasion of Afghanistan. 
China, who sits on the Security Council, wished for the U.S. to seek full authorization from the U.N., knowing that they could then control U.S. military action by threatening a veto vote. They hoped to leverage their veto power in the Security Council in exchange for manipulating the U.S. to stop supplying weapons and equipment to Taiwan, which the Chinese Communist Party continues to wish to forcefully annex to the mainland to this yeah, day. But that's still on October 4th, to stay, the it, Taliban yeah. began to read the writing on the wall and offered to turn bin Laden over to Pakistan to be put on trial in an international tribunal that oh, operated okay. in accordance to Islamic Sharia law. The proposal was rejected, knowing that seeking full authorization for invasion from the UN would jeopardize Taiwan's independence. The US invoked the right to self-defense and UN Resolution 1368 as justification. On October 7, 2001, less than a month after the attacks on the homeland, American combat aircraft launched a blistering assault on Taliban positions. The air attacks were coordinated with an offensive by the Northern Alliance, which was itself working alongside approximately 1,000 American Special Operations Forces and Central Intelligence Agency field operatives. That same day, even as bombs were raining down on their forces, the Taliban contacted the U.S. and offered to try bin Laden in Afghanistan itself under an Islamic court, knowing that justice would never be served in what yeah, would not be a shame yeah. trial. The U.S. rejected the proposal. Meanwhile, American and British aircraft continued a blistering offensive against Taliban strongholds. Cruise missiles launched from warships in the Arabian Sea flew over Pakistan to strike at military targets inside Afghanistan. On the ground, Northern Alliance forces fighting alongside Green Berets from the 5th Special Forces Group, aircrew from the 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment, and numerous Air Force combat controllers pushed south from their strongholds in the mountains. The American bombing campaign was so fierce that just like in Desert Storm, Taliban forces surrendered or defected in mass. The first major victory of the ground war would come on the 9th of November, when the Taliban stronghold of Mazar-e-Sharif was captured. This allowed US-backed forces to rapidly conquer most of northern Afghanistan. Okay. Four a days after the progress. capture of yeah. Mazari Sharif, Kabul was captured after a surprise Taliban withdrawal from Which the Which is mad, again, because... The pressure mount I mean, it's probably going to get into it. We don't know much about this. No. All we know is, is what was it, 13, 14 years later? Mm -hmm. They pull out. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe it might have been longer, it might have been longer, it might have been 18 years, I can't remember what the exact. But it was just like three years ago they pulled out tomorrow, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Uh, it's mad that was three years ago. Because yeah. time, time just flies by. Like, I remember being at work and about breaking that they've gone out and every do all the planes time leaving. Um, I think that was about three years ago. Was that before COVID? I want to say it was. I couldn't tell you. I can't remember. Time has just merged together. Uh, but it lasted so long, but you think all the early progress mm -hmm. which was made, knowing what we know, but it lasted yeah. so long, it's like, what? <laughs> John, I get that it's the train, stuff like that, kind of, but yeah. it's just mad hearing it like this. It is. Mounted, the Taliban in the north of the country were forced into a last-ditch defense in Kunduz. However, under withering air attack, Northern Alliance forces destroyed Taliban defenses and took the city on the 26th of November. Okay. A new problem arose as a significant number of Taliban fighters fled across the border and into Pakistan. In the Pakistani tribal areas, the government has very little power and the U.S. hesitated from pursuing and destroying retreating Taliban fighters out of fear of inflaming greater tensions amongst the northern tribes of Pakistan. Okay. Wishing to secure Pakistani support for the war, the U.S. also refrained from taking actions that would violate its attempt at cooperation with the government. Unbeknownst for a few more years to the U.S., though, Pakistan was secretly aiding and even equipping the Taliban and other insurgents as they would cross the border into Afghanistan. Oh, wow. Their support was spearheaded by Pakistan's Inter-Services Intelligence Agency, which ran a massive effort to arm, feed, and even provide medical care for wounded Taliban and other insurgent I never fighters. Knew that. I While didn't know never that. verified, it is strongly suspected that Pakistan was also fully aware of the fact that Osama bin Laden was hiding in their territory and likely even assisted efforts to keep him hidden from U.S. sources. Given that bin Laden was discovered hiding in Abbottabad, a major city known for its military institutions and often compared to America's West Point, it's incredulous to think that Pakistan was not actively protecting bin Laden from American arrest or assassination. The reason why is simple. The Taliban represented a strong barrier between Pakistan and Iran, as well as helping to limit Western influence in the region. Pakistan had every incentive to keep the Taliban in power and yeah. under their influence, and U.S. plans to uproot al-Qaeda directly clashed with what they saw as a national security priority. In the south of the country, Taliban forces retreated to Kandahar. Before the assault on the city began, the Taliban agreed to surrender to the U.S., a deal which was rejected by Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld as a precondition to surrender was that Taliban leader Mullah Muhammad Omar 
be granted amnesty. This was unacceptable to the United States. Yeah, we wanted to talk about Omar that in power didn't. would only encourage the Taliban to persist in a future conflict. Thus, the first battle of Kandahar was on. On the 19th of October, 200 Rangers from the 3rd Ranger Battalion, 75th Ranger Regiment, landed on a desert landing strip south of the city. Okay. There, they linked up with 750 American paratroopers from the 101st Airborne Division. Oh, wow. The task force immediately set about creating the U.S.'s first base inside Afghanistan, known as Camp Rhino. This okay. would serve as a logistics base to support the Northern Alliance and provide direct combat aid to their forces in the battle to come. Kandahar was heavily defended, and given its dense urban nature would be a difficult city to capture. Defended by fanatical Taliban fighters who knew this was their last stand, the U.S. moved to prepare Northern Alliance forces for the tough fight ahead. On the 18th of November, militia commander Gul Agha Shahzai was contacted by American Special Forces. Under his command, Shahzai had about 800 fighters, but they were severely under-equipped for the task at hand. Okay. With Uncle Sam bringing lots of Not spare toys, Shahzai's militia was soon reinforced with weapons, ammunition, and vehicles. On the 22nd of November, a force of 100 vehicles advanced on Kandahar through the desert. Shahzai attempted to bypass Taliban strongholds ringing the city, but was forced to stop at the Taliban-held town of Taktipur. There he attempted to negotiate a surrender of the outnumbered and outgunned Taliban fighters, but instead was ambushed. American air power held in reserve to directly support Shahzai was immediately called, devastating the Taliban ambush. Their forces were put into a full retreat, vacating the city. That's the thing, you know, the, 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 the plan always should, like, surrender the negotiation. Yeah. Then the ambush is like, the trust is gone. Do you know what I mean? The next time they do, you're not going to believe them. Um, oh yeah, it's maddening, all, isn't it? It's crazy. Because like I say, we, we know bits about it, but I don't know much, because this is... And also the timeline. Oh, yeah, the timeline. This is all happening literally when we're two. Mm. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah. Um, respect to the military. The guys who've gone over there, one, they don't know if they're going to survive or not, because it's dangerous. Mm. Two, they've gone to come from the Middle East to fight away from their families, and it's just respect. Yeah, it's like definitely. up there, just so, like, say, for protection of their own country, mm -hmm. it's mad and so good. The expeditionary respect. unit arrived at Fab Rhino on November 25th, relieving the 101st Airborne. The 101st was immediately tasked to strike at Taliban positions outside of the city, and two days later, the 15th MEU joined the fight, supported by a unit of Australian Special Air Service operators. Okay. Hamid Karzai, leading the Eastern Alliance, had spent several weeks recruiting after the Battle of Tarankwat on November 14th. With about 800 men, Karzai led an attack on Kandahar from the north. On the oh, 30th of November, back. Karzai's forces took the town of Pitah without a fight, but when they attempted to take the bridge at Said Am Kaleh, met with stiff resistance. The United States aided Karzai's forces with two days of heavy airstrikes using precision munitions that left the bridge intact. On the 4th of December, overwhelmed by American air power, Karzai's forces managed to secure the bridge by setting up a beachhead on the other side. Unfortunately, the next day, a stray American bomb would land on a U.S. position, wow. killing three Special Forces soldiers and wounding Karzai. So dangerous However, war, Karzai's it? forces mm -hmm. remained cohesive even with their leader wounded and began negotiations with the Taliban for surrender of Kandahar. Meanwhile, Shahzai's forces initiated an assault on Kandahar's airport but they were surprised to discover little resistance from the Taliban. Unbeknownst to Shirzai, the Taliban had surrendered the city to Karzai, but it was Shirzai at the head of his militia who entered the city and was declared governor of the city. Karzai, meanwhile, did not object as he'd already been declared chairman of the Afghan interim administration, okay. which would work to establish a new democratic government after the fall of the Taliban. By the 9th of December, Kandahar had been fully secured. A group of Al-Qaeda troops under the command of Saif al Adel managed to escape into Pakistan. al -Adel remains on the FBI's top 10 most wanted terrorists to this day and is wow. believed to be hiding out in Iran. Wow, I, I, was I don't know when this video is done, but let us know, is, is that still to this day now? Look, that's a long time in it, yeah. which is mad. The United States and its allies launched a massive attack against Al-Qaeda forces in the cave complex of Tora Bora. On December 3rd, 20 CIA National Clandestine Services Special Activities Division operatives alongside members from the 5th Special Forces Group were inserted via helicopter into Jalalabad. Codenamed Jawbreaker, the tank force coordinated with the Northern Alliance fighters as they began an assault on the planes leading up to the cave complex. For 72 complex? hours, Jawbreaker called in a series of non-stop airstrikes on enemy positions, wow. forcing them to retreat into more entrenched positions further up the mountains. One week later, 70 special operators from the U.S. Army's Delta Force A Squadron and Air Force Special Tactics Squadron joined Jawbreaker via vehicle. 
they would lead the ground operation against the Al-Qaeda positions. For their part, Al-Qaeda fighters would light fires at night for warmth and to cook, which allowed U.S. aircraft to launch precision strikes against them. With the aid of U.S., German, and British Special Forces, Northern Alliance fighters made progress into the cave complexes. Al-Qaeda forces contacted a local Afghan commander and negotiated a truce. However, the time requested to surrender their weapons was believed to actually be used to buy time to allow senior Al-Qaeda officials to escape. On the 12th of December, okay. fighting resumed Again, just... as a rear guard attempted to buy time for Al-Qaeda's main forces to escape into Pakistan. Alliance forces, along with U.S. Special Forces them, and heavy yeah, air can't. support, assaulted heavily fortified Al-Qaeda positions in caves and bunkers, leading the attack against the complex of Tora Bora itself were 13 British Special Forces operators alongside German and American operators. I mean, again, the British made it in there as well, but it must have been so hard. You've got a cave complex, which they know probably off the back of the hand, mm -hmm. yeah. fortified, can't see that much. It must have been incredibly hard. Like, it's like going into a unknown, isn't going it? Going into the unknown blind, and you've got no advantage. Yeah, there's uh, no, yeah. So, so hard and scary. These forces helped secure the flanks of the Alliance assault against Al Qaeda ambush and were critical in success of the operation. Intent on the complete destruction of Al-Qaeda forces, the U.S. continued a heavy bombing campaign against the cave complexes. A force of 2,000 local militias organized and paid for by U.S. Special Forces and CIA operatives massed for an attack against the complex. By December 17th, Al-Qaeda's last stronghold was destroyed, and U.S. Special Forces immediately launched a search for Osama bin Laden. Okay. Bin Laden, however, had managed to successfully escape into Pakistan. Later, it was revealed that the CIA officer leading the CIA team on the ground had requested more U.S. forces to directly attack the caves that he believed bin Laden had been trapped inside of. His request was denied by the Bush administration, who believed that even if bin Laden evaded capture, he would be arrested as soon as he entered Pakistan. But he wouldn't. We know now that he bin wasn't. Laden was likely captured by the Pakistani government, who promptly whisked him into hiding in order to use him as a future bargaining chip. Had the request for additional oh, forces been approved, the war on terror could have ended a decade earlier than it did. Mm. After the taking of Kandahar and the destruction of Al-Qaeda's stronghold in Tora Bora, surviving Taliban and Al-Qaeda forces either went to ground or escaped in Pakistan. From the safety of Pakistan's federally administered tribal areas, an insurgency blossomed, which allowed the Taliban to launch repeated assaults against the democratic government taking root in Afghanistan. Without permission from Pakistan to send troops to root out the cancer growing in its tribal areas, the U.S. was forced to rely on drones to surveil yeah, the target about it, leadership. These drone strikes drew global condemnation, thanks in no part to the fact that Pakistan's ISI itself fanned the flames of outrage in order to limit U.S. influence. The truth is that casualties from the U.S. drone strikes were self-reported by forces operating in the tribal areas, which did not allow Pakistani government investigators to enter. Thus, casualty figures were never truly verified by anyone other than the very insurgents and terrorists that the U.S. was targeting. Oh, and the wow. fact that these mm. individuals don't wear military uniforms allowed them to claim that all the victims, or at least most, were innocent civilians. Al yeah, Al-Qaeda, however, would be that. destroyed yeah. as a global terror organization, while the Taliban would bide its time until 2021 when they exploited a U.S. pullout of the nation to topple the weak democratic government. Now check out how SEAL Team took down Osama bin Laden minute by minute. Wow, mate, let us know if you want to check out uh, that out, but like again, I didn't know they were using him as a bargaining chip. I just assumed Pakistan didn't know. I, I didn't know the history. No, I didn't know. Um, I, I kind of forgot we were doing a 9-11 reaction at that point yeah. because we went on to a war. Um, yeah. Yeah, I learned a lot of stuff I did not know about. You learn a lot. Obviously, you're getting a tragic, tragic uh, incident. Is incident. It, 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 yeah, I don't really know what it's to call it. It's not an accident. It was it's not an accident. It's, I don't want to call it an event. I it's, uh, for, yeah, but, events are positive. Day. Yeah, so incident. incident. And, um, I'd say if anyone's affected, we hope you're okay. Uh, that's why it lasted so long. Obviously, at the start, I made so much progress, but kind of because they all mm. escaped to Pakistan, built it back up, and then yeah. they could do the attacks. I mean, obviously, they take a, took advantage in 2021, which you don't hear anything about really no, nowadays, you don't, do you? Really. Which is quite interesting. Um, but maybe I don't hear about it because I don't look into it. Yeah, maybe. I, I just haven't looked into it. Um, but if you enjoyed that, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, a hard one. Um, hope you enjoy my videos because we're all away at the moment, and uh, Millie is super pregnant, so doing like a long one like this must be super hard on you. So I imagine you potentially are quite tired now, ready but for some food. <laughs> ready for some food. Um, but we want we want to get content for you guys while we're away, and I think these reactions are super important. One for remembering, learning it, and us for just to learn because yeah. I say at the time we were two, didn't have a timeline. The only things we get are is like in twenty twenty one when it kicks up again. You learn a bit more from the news, it's like the history of the timeline, but you actually see properly from videos mm -hmm. like this. 
Smash that button, guys. Smash the subscribe button. We hope you ladies are all having a fantastic day. What should we do? Have a fantastic oh, day. Oh, yeah, you say that line, don't you? Peace.